Hi there, this is Jack from Becoming a Doctor. I'm going to be talking today about my top five tips for the United Kingdom Clinical Aptitude Test, or UKCAT. My first and most important tip is to be picky. What do I mean by this? In the UKCAT, the main challenge is the time frame. You're never going to run out of questions, but you will need to be able to choose between them in a logical way. If a question looks too hard, and by that I mean it might be too long, it might be overly complicated, then simply make a guess, flag it using the flag button, and move swiftly on to the next question. A lot of students feel that they have to make a good attempt at each question, but the simple fact of the matter is there's too many questions really, and so it makes sense to prioritise the ones that are easier in order to maximise your score. If you have time left over, you can always come back to review your flag questions. This is especially important for the quantitative reasoning section, where given all the marks are distributed across questions of varying lengths, it's logical to focus on the shorter questions before going for the wordy, long-winded uh, questions. As a side point, I'd also recommend always trying to guess the same letter. Statistically speaking, this will improve your uh, return on your guesses, so I always guessed C. Tip number two is to stay healthy. Now, this is actually quite a good one for trainees to become a doctor in general. I think you should treat revision and learning like a sport. So by that I mean you should eat well, you should sleep well, and you should focus on your exercise. So you don't want to simply lock yourself away with your books and sort of, you know, lose touch with the world. You need to make sure that you are looking after yourself if you want to get a decent score. And this is true not just for the UK cap, but A-levels and the actual degree itself. So it's good to start work on this early. It's very important to think about something that helps you unwind and that you make time for it. Now, this might be jogging, walking, reading, there's really no limit, but anything that helps you relax is very, very valuable for revision. Tip number three is to keep the exam conditions. Now, when you first look at the UK CAT, in order to associate yourself with the structure of the questions and the nature of the exam, it's probably a good idea to ignore the time limits and simply focus on trying to understand what it is that you're meant to be assessing from each question and getting to grips with the basics. However, it's very important that you transition into keeping to exam conditions because the main challenge of the test is the time limit, in my opinion. So there's various ways that you can keep to this. You can use a stopwatch or other mechanism of just keeping time. But what I would recommend is that you keep to online exams uh, because they are automatically keeping you to uh, a time limit. And what this also does, as we'll come on to a little bit later as well, it gets you some practice with the on-screen calculator. But this is very important. You need to keep yourself disciplined with this time limit because it's easy to think, oh, well, you know, I'd rather just try and understand what's going on here. But you just need to get used to that really rapid-fire aspect to it. And after a while, it will start to become easier. Tip number four is to use your tools. So, <clears throat> coming into the exam, there are several tools available, including an on-screen calculator. You need to get familiar with this, and this is another reason why it's useful to use the online resources, because they will usually have some form of calculator for you to get to grips with and allow you to not feel so flustered when you come in on the day and think, oh, this is quite different to what I expected. You need to be familiar with what functions are available and how you interact with it. Another very important thing that not uh, is very often kind of forgotten about is the whiteboard and pen. Now, it's your responsibility to make sure that you have this available in the exam. Uh, you don't have to bring it with you, but you need to make sure that the invigilators know that you need one, and they'll come out and provide you one. It's not considered an extenuating circumstance if you start the test and realise that actually you don't have it. Now, for me, this was a really critical piece of kit. In the decision analysis section, it allows you to write out the code as you do it, 
which makes things infinitely easier because instead of trying to hold an abstract length of concepts in your head, you can simply write out, okay, word one, word two, word three, and then it becomes much easier to interpret. Obviously, you can also use it to jot down calculations. Now, going off of my previous advice, you don't want to be going too deep into mathematical questions, but it's obviously very important if you are working on something that has a couple of steps in the equation, it's very good to just drop one of those bits down so that you're not getting yourself too tied up. The last piece of advice I'll give in this quick video is to be aware of the planning of the date. So a lot of people just try and get the UK cat done as soon as possible. So as soon as bookings open, they try and get it out of the way so they can enjoy the summer. On the other end of the spectrum, some people leave it till after the summer holidays are done, and maybe when they're back at uni, if they're graduate entry, or when they're back at school. Now, personally, I think the best thing is to leave it till around mid to late summer because you want to give yourself some time over the summer to allow sufficient practice but I don't think it would be a good idea to leave it so late that you actually then have overriding commitments with your school or university. I think the sweet spot is that mid to late point where you're aware of the fact that you haven't necessarily got anything pressuring you. Of course you don't have to go overboard and don't necessarily think you have to cancel holidays or something to make room for it but just try and make sure that in the weeks running up to it you don't have much on so that you're able to devote the proper amount of time. Thanks very much for having a listen to this. I hope it's been useful. You can find more resources by following up on Becoming a Doctor online.